Hi everybody. My goal is to quickly go through some problems that we went over on Tuesday, the 6th of September. Many of you were out with COVID. The first is warming up with gravity and on the back side of the same document, um, something about expanding your toolkit and our system. So I'm going to quickly go through those problems as quickly as possible. On the board behind me is the problem. A stone is thrown upward with a velocity of 16 meters per second from a 95 meter cliff that overlooks the beach near Half Moon Bay. After 6.1 seconds, what is the stone's velocity? I'm actually going to diagram the situation first. The cliff is 95 meters high. Here's the beach and a person on top of that cliff throws a ball upward at 16 meters per second. Presumably that ball goes up and comes down. We want to know what it's doing 6.1 seconds later. Let's make a list. I didn't say so, but I would stress that if you could print this out, or if you can't print it out, take a blank piece of paper, and while you're watching this video, do the parts of the problem before I do them. Stop the video, work it. For now, make your own list. Pause the video, make your list. After pausing the video and making your list, hopefully you realize that the ball was going upward, positive 16 meters per second. If you remember from last week, whenever an object is undergoing free fall, that is to say the only force acting on it is the force of gravity, then negative 9.8 meters per second squared is our acceleration due to gravity. You might be tempted to say that displacement is 95, or even negative 95, which would be better. But in fact, we don't know if the ball is going to travel all the way down to the beach below. Maybe it's somewhere in between. and so. Look at the next piece of information. Your time is 6.1 seconds. Do we have three numbers? We do. So why not find the final velocity with what we have? I would, I would for the moment, treat x as not available. Of course, when x is not available, we use the first equation. I don't need to solve it for final velocity. It's already solved for final velocity, so I'm going to plug in my values. reminding you that if you're using a primitive calculator like I am, it's best to do this part first, then add 16 to it. 9.8 negative times 6.1 is negative 59.78 plus 16. And my final answer is negative 43.78. Let's round that off to negative 44. The final velocity after 6.1 seconds is negative 44 meters per second. Make sure that you can do that without me. I ask a kind of a parenthetical question. Is the stone moving upward after 6.1 seconds? Yes or no? The fact that the final velocity comes out negative tells us no. It is moving downward. It has a negative velocity. It's moving in the negative direction. The next question is, what is the displacement? And I'll do that next. So I've moved the paper up. What's the displacement of the stone after 6.1 seconds? Well, our, our, our original list is, pretty, is still pretty good. And, and some of you might be tempted to put negative 43.78, which is the answer we got to the prior problem, part A. Um, and you could use this number. But I'm going to actually pretend like I don't have that answer. Because what if I made a mistake calculating the negative 43.78? What if it's wrong? It'll make my answer to this wrong. So I'm going to choose the equation that doesn't have final velocity in it. And one more time, that's the third equation. I've written the third equation. This does not equal zero. Sometimes we can cross it out, but in this case we cannot. So let's go ahead and put in our V naught, 16 meters per second, our initial velocity upward, the time of 6.1 seconds, plus the quantity 1 half times A times 
times t squared. Just a friendly reminder, only time gets squared. It's 6.1 squared, then times 9.8 negative, then times a half, hit equals, then hit plus, open the parentheses in your calculator and perform this calculation, close the parentheses, and hit equals, and that should get you the sum. I'm gonna do just that. The result is negative 84.729. So what does that tell us? There's a lot of things happening in this problem. I mean, the ball goes up, it reaches its maximum height above the thrower, it comes back down, it continues to fall if enough time has elapsed, and after 6.1 seconds, it's 84.7 meters below its release point, the zero point that we're counting everything relative to the top of the cliff in this case. So that means it's if it's 95 meters to the beach, it's not fallen all the way. If it were to have fallen all the way, its displacement would be negative 95, but its displacement is only negative 85 rounded off. Um, so the last question, where is the stone relative to the beach? Think about that. The beach is 95 below the cliff. It has fallen 85 below the cliff. It must be 10 meters above the beach. I hope that was useful. I'm gonna flip the paper over and quickly show you the new thing that I really am making this video for. Okay, assume for the moment that you throw a baseball straight downward from the roof of a 42 and a half meter building with a speed of 13.2 meters per second. How long does it take to hit the ground, to reach the ground? So again, we've gotten to a place in physics where I think a diagram of the situation is really helpful. This ball is thrown downward at 13.2 meters per second, and presumably it speeds up and hits the ground going faster than 13.2 meters per second. Let's make a list. Again, you should make your own list before you watch the rest of this film. Since you threw it downward, your velocity is initially downward, and therefore initial velocity is negative, 13.2 meters per second. We don't know much about the final velocity. I'm going to skip that. Acceleration is that of gravity always, right? Negative 9.8. And in this case, unlike the prior problem, it asks for the the time it takes to get to the ground. So its displacement is gonna be all the way to the ground. And again, many of you are tempted to make that 42.5, but of course the displacement, the change in position is negative because it's gone down from its original position. Time is what we're looking for. Clearly, we don't have the final velocity. It does strike the ground with some non-zero velocity. It's moving when it hits the ground, but we don't know what that is. We're gonna treat that as not available. Uh, again, the equation that we typically use when V is not available is the third equation here in red. I hope you've stayed this far with me. We've got a problem. And the problem is you're solving for time. But time is to the first power in this term and squared to the second power in this term. In order to solve that for time, when this quantity here doesn't equal zero, which it doesn't because the initial velocity is not zero, and time is most certainly not zero. When this term is not zero, solving this equation for time requires the quadratic formula, something I would like to avoid. So I'm going to pull a trick on you, and that's what I mean by expanding your toolkit in our system. Why don't we for the moment pretend that we don't want to find time? I know we do, but let's just pretend like that's not available and that you want to know your final velocity. That avoids the quadratic equation because, of course, that leads us to the one equation where time is missing, and that's the fourth equation. Final velocity squared equals initial squared plus 2 times a times x. So let's go ahead and use that fourth equation. Taking the square root of both sides, yields the square root of v naught plus 2ax. Plugging the values we have in gives me 
the negative 13.2 meters per second squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 42.5. you'll notice that this is a very important negative. If, if it weren't negative, if you had accidentally called it positive 42, then this whole quantity between my fingers would be a negative number. That's gonna change the answer under the root, and when you square root it, it changes your final answer. When I put this in my calculator, I know that two negatives multiplied together make a positive, so I might just ignore those. And I know that the square of a negative number is the same as the square of the positive number, 13.2. So while I might be able to ignore them in my calculation, they're critical to set up the problem and know what cancels and what doesn't. I'm going to perform that calculation now. What you should get under the root is 1,007, and when you take the square root of that, you get 31.74. Now here's where you have to make another careful play. The square root of any number is really plus or minus the root. In this case, the ball, when it hits the ground, is going down. And so the correct answer, both plus 31.74 and negative 31.74 are valid answers, but the only one that makes sense to us is the negative because we know it's going down. I'm going to replace that in my list, negative 31.74 meters per second. That's a rounded number. It was really 31.737 something, but, but that's good enough. So now, look at my list. What I really, really, really want is time. But now I know four quantities, and I can use any equation of the remaining three that have time in them. And we've already talked about why this one's kind of a pain in the neck. So one of these two is probably good. I'm going to use the first equation and I'll show you why. I think the first equation is the easiest to solve. I'm going to subtract V naught from both sides and then simply divide by A. And when I do, I get V minus V naught over A. Plugging in the values for final velocity, negative 31.74 minus negative 13.2 over negative 9.8. If you mind your negatives, you'll get a 1.89 second, something like that. But you can see clearly that like, if, the, if you accidentally left this positive, your answer is going to be very different than the correct answer. Um, I hope that was helpful. I rounded this to 1.9 on the bottom of the paper. But this is really a way to see problems differently. If you don't have always an easy way to get what you want, sometimes you can take a back door and find another variable and then use that to calculate the answer you're looking for.